In this video, I'm going to go over how you can format output to the console window using console.writeLine method. All right, let's get some data that we can start working with. First, I'm going to create some uh, variables that are using the common data types we are talking about. So let's make a string variable named name, and let's go ahead and assign it a value. And then I will make an integer variable named age, and we will assign it a value. And let's make a double va variable, a type double variable named salary, and we will assign it some value. There we go. The console.writeLine method, so console.writeLine console.writeLine method can take lots of different data types as input values. The console.writeLine method, let's remember that the writeLine method exists in the console class, which exists in the system namespace. So if you don't have a using system statement at the top of your program, you would have to specifically type system.console.writeLine to specify the path where the writeLine method exists. Okay. Now the console.writeLine, the way you typically use it is you just put some string value inside the parentheses here. So if I were to print or, or have the statement console.writeLine, the string value hello, this would print hello to the console. Now you can also print variables. So if I were to say console.writeLine and pass in the variable, the string variable name, well, in this case, we would print Anna. We will print the contents of this string variable name. So console.writeLine works with string values. Now, if I put console.writeLine and entered an integer variable, what would happen here is this integer variable would be converted to its string form. So the, the string form of age would look something like um, quote, double quotes 26, the character is 2, 6. So the integer value will be converted to its string representation and then printed. So if we, if we were to run this line, it would print the characters 2 and 6. Same thing would happen with a double. If I tried to just print a, or use right line on a double variable or value, it will convert that double value to its string representation and then print that value. So pretty straightforward here. Now what happens if I want to embed any of these values into a my output string? So for example, what if I wanted to write in one line the string that said hello to whatever name value we have? Well in that case we can use placeholders, some placeholder syntax. So we'll make a note here, embed values into an output string. Let me write the syntax first and then we will discuss. So I'm going to call console.writeLine and I want to say hello to whatever name we have. So I'm going to say hello, put a little placeholder here, and then pass the value I want to insert. So let's go over this syntax. Whenever I want to embed a value into my output string, the first thing I need to do is create a full string that contains a placeholder for where the value is going to go. A placeholder is defined by a pair of open and closed curly black brackets, the same brackets we use to define a code block. In between those curly brackets, we are going to have a number, an integer number. That integer number is going to reference the index of the values that are then passed after the string. So by, and we will have some comma separated values after the string. So here I have one placeholder and I have one value that comes after it. All of this information is between the parentheses of my right line method. Now humans like to count things one, two, three, but computers like to start counting things starting with zero. So if I were to count all of the values I have after my string, I would say I have zero values. It's the zeroth value. Okay, so if I run this, the zeroth value here is going to be inserted into the placeholder that contains the zero. 
So when we run this, this should print the, the text, hello, Anna. Let's do another example, console.writeline. This time I will say um, placeholder is age, and I will make a second placeholder and pass in two values, name and age. I have a full string that's defined by a pair of double quotes. And I have two placeholders here, one that has an index of 0, one that has an index of 1. Well, if I count the values that come after my string, I can count them as a computer would, 0, 1. Name is my 0th value, age is my 1th value. So the 0th value will be inserted into the placeholder that contains the 0. So name should be inserted first. My 1th value age should be inserted into the placeholder that contains a 1. So this should print the text Anna is age 26. Let's do another example. Console.writeline 1 is age and we'll place a placeholder here 0 age name. Notice that you do not have to create placeholders that follow any new, any counting order. I made my one-th placeholder first, my zeroth placeholder second. But I also switched the place the the order of the values that I'm passing in after my string. So in this case, if I'm counting these these variables or values as a computer would, age I would count as zero, name would be one. Age is my zeroth value, name is my one-th value. So in my one-th placeholder, 0, 1, I would insert the name. In my zeroth placeholder, I would insert the zeroth value, which is age. So this should also print, Anna is age 26. So it doesn't matter kind of what order you, you number your placeholders, as long as you pass in the you list the values in the correct matching order that 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 will help you um, create whatever output you, you're looking for. So if you want age to go first, you know, make sure they the index of the order you put the variable and the index you put inside the placeholder match up. Let's do one more example. Console.writeline. How about placeholder zero? comma, age placeholder 1, comma, makes dollar sign placeholder 2. So I have, I have three placeholders in this string. And this dollar sign, any, any spaces or commas or characters I place outside the placeholders will be printed literally as they are shown. Only the placeholder itself will have data inserted into it. Now if I wanted to insert the name value first, the age value second, and my salary value third, and I've indexed them as so, 0, 1, 2, then I need to make sure I list or, or have all three of the variables passed after the string was created in the order I want to insert them. So the zeroth spot is supposed to be name, so I'm going to list my name variable. My next index is age. My last one is salary. And so this should print a line of text that looks something like Anna, comma, age 26, comma, makes dollar sign, and then we will insert 5500.123. Okay. Common mistakes when, when students are getting started with formatted output is uh, the first common mistake I see is accidentally starting with one, so doing one, two, three, instead of zero, one, two, and then only having three values listed afterwards. If I were to put one, two, three, then um, Visual Studio is going to expect there is zero, one, two, three, another variable or value that's passed into this right line method, and we will get an exception thrown and the program will crash. So always make sure we start at zero. Each time I call console.writeline, I start back at the zeroth placeholder value. So 
the, another common mistake I see is that students will um, type zero on the first line, one on the next line, start with two on the next line, and so on. Each, each right line is its own command, own statement. All right. Let's talk about some special formatting characters. So special placeholder formatting syntax here. In my example above, when I inserted the salary value, my salary variable, I, I have a value that has three decimal points. But usually when we deal with currency values, um, we only want two decimal points. So there are some special, there's a special syntax we can use that will properly format some of our numeric values. And those are a colon F, stands for fixed point, which just allows you to set the number of decimals that come after in your double value. So the default is two decimal places. Currency will add a dollar sign for you. Here I have specifically put in a dollar sign, but the currency formatter will add a dollar sign for you and give you two decimals. So this adds a dollar sign and gives two decimals. And the percentage, what the percentage will do is it will divide your value, or no, I'm sorry, it will multiply your value by 100 and then add a percent sign. Because if you are dealing with a, a decimal percent value like 0.2, that usually refers to the percentage value um, 20%. So it's going to do that type of conversion. So let's let's do an example. I'm going to say console.writeline. First, let's just print the salary value as itself. So I'm going to make a placeholder and just print the, the salary. And then I'm going to copy this a couple times. And we will look at the different placeholder syntax results. So here I'm going to make, do colon F. Here I'm going to do colon C. And here I do colon P. And let's run this program and compare some of our outputs, make sure it's the program's doing what we think it's doing. All right, here we have our output. Let's compare some of our outputs here. So here I have examples of where we were printing our four values, and we printed hello, Anna, 26, and our salary. Then here are some of our formatted outputs. So my first one, I say hello, and I have a placeholder, and I inserted the name value, and I printed hello, Anna. And you can see as we go down here, each of these outputs is not printing the placeholder syntax. It's printing the values that we inserted into those placeholders. Now, in our using our special formatting characters here, notice when I print the salary by itself, with no formatting, I just print the number. But when I format it using the colon F, syntax and that colon F uh, it can be it's it's case insensitive so I can use oh sorry I, I can't change it while I'm running I could use a capital F here or a lowercase F but I've given I've limited our output to two decimals by default the colon C formatter added a dollar sign put a comma in the to separate the thousands and millions and gave us two decimals by default and using the colon P formatter, we multiplied our the salary value by 100 and added a percent sign. And we have two decimals by default. All right. In my next video, I'm going to show us how to use some special string characters.